Okay, um, rather than delay any further, um, Tade, we're talking today about how you explain your value to sellers. You're so good at it. Um, it. But before we go down that road, what gets you excited about real estate? What makes you want to get up in the morning and go out and do this? Well, probably 99% of the time I want to get up and do it. There are a couple days I don't out of the year, but honestly, um, you know, my mom and I love what we're doing. You know, the fact that we get to help people uh, find their vision, do what they, you know, help them find their dream homes uh, here in paradise is very rewarding. Um, you know, when I started my career in real estate, it was more about first time home buyers, you know, in Naples, um, it's about people finding, you know, um, filling a void. You know, I always say to people that are looking here, when people look in Naples, they're trying to find a void of something that's missing in their life. And a lot of times Naples has that for them, you know, whether it's the golfing or the beach or tennis, um, but just being here in paradise in Naples, Florida has been a wonderful place to be, um, provides a lifestyle uh, for people and where, you know, their kids can come, their grandkids can come, and it becomes a new home base. You know, when you're growing up, you remember your childhood home, and I think a lot of people remember their vacation homes here. So, uh, you know, we're starting to see here in Naples a lot more people coming um, that came here with their parents. You know, younger generations are coming now, and they remember coming to Naples years ago and, you know, it's been really nice for them to be able to buy their own piece of paradise. So, you know, that's one of the things. And, you know, it's just really providing the, an easy process for people, you know, uh, when they are buying a home uh, to make them happy, you know, from point A to point B. Uh, getting them across the finish line here, it's something my mom and I really enjoy. And like I said, you are so good at it. So when you were when you were facing a seller, especially when we're we're trending toward a seller's market, uh, we're seeing multiple offers, um, multiple backups, and the seller says, "Will you cut your commission?" What's your process? I mean, how do you how do you explain the value that you provide? Well, I think you have to provide that explanation you know that's part of the reason why they're hiring you um, is because you've somehow proven to them that you in your presentation you had that value you're the right fit for them so in order to do that across the board I think up front when you're doing your listing presentation you have to show the value of what you provide over what other agents will provide and throughout the process of marketing and you know the things that you do as an agent uh, to market a home I think it's important that they see that as well, what you're putting into it. You're not just taking iPhone pictures. You're, you know, showing a lot of the value and everything that you do, quite frankly, to help them obtain an offer, let alone multiple offers. So, you know, what I think my mom and I do on a presentation is provide, you know, a lot of documentation of why we're the best and why they should be hiring us. And a lot of times you can do that through your successes as an agent. So you can talk about if you're in a neighborhood that you're, you know, done a lot of business. So, you know, point that out. Don't be quiet about it. You know, people don't know what they don't know. So if you're not telling them why you're the best, you can't assume they're going to know why you're the best. So if you have uh, a track record in a certain neighborhood, let people know about that. Let them know, you know, the company that you're with, their track record and the success that John R. Wood has through all their marketing efforts and everything and how we've been the number one company, you know, for years over years here in the Southwest Florida market. You have to let people know what's out there. So your expertise is very important um, for what you'll bring to the table for them as well as your track record. You know, if you've been successful and you've done those things, you have to tell them. If, you know, I think that's the biggest thing that agents are afraid to do sometimes is to tell sellers why they're the best. You know, you can't be humble in a listing appointment. You can be nice when you're presenting things and explaining things, but you have to be able to be, think about it if the shoe was on the other foot. Would you hire an agent that wasn't, you know, self-confident and didn't, 
show some bragging rights and things like that. Think about how a seller is viewing you as their agent in front of them that they're trying to decide if they want to hire. If you don't present yourself as being the expert and being the person that has the best knowledge base of their market, they're not going to hire you. So, you know, that's really important, I think, when you go on a presentation is to put yourself in their shoes, put yourself in a seller's shoes and, and look at yourself. You know, for years, when I first got my license, I sat in front of a mirror and I practiced my listing presentation over and over and over. I did it to anyone that would listen to me. I did it with my manager. I did it with, you know, other agents. I did it with my husband. You know, I did it with my friends. I wanted to get critiqued, you know, on, on how I presented myself. And so I think a lot of agents are afraid to practice their presentation. And a lot of times I think that's the first thing you should be doing is really practicing your presentation so that you have self-confidence. You only get one shot at a listing appointment to typically, you know, for a seller to make a decision. So you have to know what you're talking about uh, for their marketplace, the statistics, you know, um, Mike Dodge has done a good job, you know, recently with all these market reports and everything like that. We always bring tons of information. You don't have to present all the information, but you'll see where the people's hot buttons are. So, you know, that way you're prepared, you have the information, you don't have to say, I'm going to come back, you know, let me get that for you. Um, you can just kind of dig through your presentation folder and, and pull it right out for them. So I think that's important. Absolutely. And so when, when you're overcoming objection, I'm sure there are any number of objections that you're, uh, that you're handling now and you have different approaches to them, you know, for instance, uh, well, so-and-so will take my listing for 5%. Um, how are you, what are some of the common objections that you're, that you're experiencing right now in this market? And, and uh, what are some of the, the responses that you have? Okay, so I think a lot of times the, the biggest thing is, and maybe we can all practice this together, will you reduce your commission? What is the answer? No. no. <laughs> Everyone say it every time. It's real simple. You know, no. I, you know, if someone says to us, and, you know, Jill, I see her on this, and Megan, who used to be a team member, I see her name was on here. You know, they'll tell you, they'll come to me and say, this seller wants to, and I'll say, go back to them and tell them no. You know, it's, you, if you can't negotiate your own commission as an agent, you will never, ever, ever be able to negotiate a seller's price on property for them well. And if you are going up against an agent that, you know, you know cuts commission or you know does reduce fees, I, we like to ask, who are we up against? Because I'll get every single thing I know about that agent before I go into that presentation. If I know they don't do, you know, multiple pictures or they, you know, cut their commission, I want to know what all the things I'm up against are before I go into the presentation. So if I know, like, for instance, we're going on something in, in Gray Oaks or on the beach and we're going against someone that, you know, we know does reduce commissions, you know, we'll look at, you know, how much do their listings sell for, list price to sale price ratios, you know, how long are their listings on the market, you know, if being able to, you know, explain, you know, if you have a reduced take longer, you know, for it to sell, things like that. So, you know, we've gotten pretty good, I think, at saying no, you know, to sellers. You know, a lot of times, you know, we've said to them, well, we can raise your commission, you know, you want to get your house sold faster or your condo sold faster, you know, we can do that too, you know, and, and here's why it's so important to have a full commission so that, you know, and we explain to them, listen, agents, you know, you remember, I don't know if any of you took a class years ago, but there was a guy going around that had the dollar bill and he'd take the dollar bill and he'd tear it in half and He'd say half is, you know, my commission, you know, the listing side, the other half is the selling side. And by the time he was all done, you know, the IRS got their piece, the company got their piece, marketing got their piece. There's a tiny little piece left in the 
dollar bill. So, I mean, not that you, you can take monopoly money because people get offended if you use a real dollar, but you know, that's the kind of thing that, you know, you have to give them the visual of what they're doing and asking you to cut your commission. Um, you know, again, I think it goes back to self-confidence. You know, when you talk to any top agent that is a good listing agent, they will tell you that- Morning, this you know, is Lisa. You know, that they just don't want to cut their commissions. You know, that is something- Hi, Nancy. You know, <laughs> okay, sorry. I, okay, so back to the, you know, not cutting your commission, the dollar bill example. Um, you know, I think it's really important to be able to stand your ground on why there's value for you as their agent. You know, what you have to believe in, you know, and I think my mom and I, more, you know, we totally believe that, you know, our expertise, our experience, our knowledge base, um, our ethics, you know, all of those things is what they're getting. You yeah, know, for my mom and I, because we are a team, you know, we're telling them that they get two for one, the price of one, you know, and, and other team members say, you know, that work for us say, you know, you're getting me plus them, you know, so, you know, for us, we use the team approach to a value of getting multiple people, you know, that can be there to service your listing and to help you and things like that. But in, in trying to, re, you know, and sellers will ask, I mean, I don't blame them for asking, you know, you know, they will ask you, you know, will you cut the commission? And I have no problem saying to someone, no, and here's why. Um, you know, I think you have to practice that. It took you know, some time getting comfortable with that when I first started in my career. But at this stage of the game, I, I you know, I don't have a problem. We haven't had a problem getting our full commissions. We, that's one thing we don't do. Great. And, and Tate, can you talk a little bit about how you overcome the objection when, when uh, somebody has questioned about uh, the 295 fee? Honestly, I mean, I, I mean, we have a couple people that ask why, you know, they don't want to pay that. I think since we've been at John R. Wood for seven years, I think in the seven years, there's only been one time and it was a, it was a bank listing, you know, and they just refused to pay it. Um, we, we, I mean, we just say, listen, that's a John R. Wood fee and we don't get any part of that and they don't ever not pay that and I'm not paying it for them. So you know, you, again, you have to have confidence in what you're bringing to the table on, you know, they'll say, oh, that's a junk fee or, you know, that's stupid. I said, listen, when you buy a car, they have these fees, you know, I said, you buy a car and it's $100,000, let's say for a brand new S-Class Mercedes, you know, you're paying a delivery fee of $595 or $795, you know, we're talking about a $2 million property here, $295 is peanuts. I mean, we don't usually get into that type of banter with sellers on that fee because quite honestly, it's, it's by the time we're done with our presentation, they don't care about that. We've done a good enough job in the presentation part that we don't get asked that question a lot. So if you're an agent that's getting that question a lot, then I think you have to beef up your listing presentation a little bit more to show the value of what you're going to be doing for them that other agents won't be doing. Um, Tate, do you have any other words of wisdom that you'd like to share something that's, that you'd like to talk about um, before we open it up for questions? Well, I, I just think in, in the market that we're in, um, it's a little different than I think any of us have ever experienced. And you can decide that you want to sit on the sidelines and, you know, the woe is me and there's no business and I don't know what to do. Or, you know, you can kind of suck it up and say, I got to figure this out. Like those agents that are willing to work hard right now and, you know, with technology or, you know, beefing up their social media, um, you know, those sort of things, those are going to be the agents that are going to survive. It's, this business is a lot about being able to adapt. And I think if you're not able to adapt right now, um, you're going to be left on the sidelines. And, you know, quite frankly, I'm okay with, you know, <laughs> having a little bit of a crunch time because it's going to get rid of some of the people that can't do this. 
And I think in Naples, I think there's too many agents that don't know what they're doing and are part-time. And quite frankly, I'm happy about it because I think the experienced agents and the good agents are going to survive this. And, you know, the company has given us good tools and resources to work with through this. And, you know, the Zoom meetings and the weekly meetings that you do, um, the training sessions, you know, quite frankly, I think this is easier for a lot of top agents to attend a meeting like this, you know, for 45 minutes or an hour. They don't have to get in their car and go to corporate and do those kind of things. And you can have more people participating right now. So from that standpoint, you know, I think, I think we're going to see this as a way of business, quite frankly, moving forward for a long time. Um, I think it's easier for people. You know, they can be at their house, they can be at a home inspection, yet they're still getting the benefit of extra training. You know, I don't know, during our time off, you know, my mom and I read a lot of books and about business and marketing and things like that. Uh, we both took some online classes. You know, I got my continuing ed done super early, as early as I've ever had it done in a cycle. <laughs> Um, you know, you do what you, you do what you have to do right now. I'm doing Tony Robbins, you know, comeback seven day series. It's free on Facebook. If those of you haven't signed up today's day three, um, it's a great free, you know, motivational thing on Facebook that you can just log into and he has the other days posted so you can get caught up, but you have to be educating yourself every day. You have to, you know, I try to take, I know my mom does, she meditates every day, but you know, you have to take 30 minutes, an hour for yourself every day and, and do something for your mind to strengthen it. And I know that's something that we've always done. Um, you know, I learned it from her when I was younger. She used to listen to these tapes. We all thought she was crazy. You know, she'd listen to these motivational tapes and my bedroom was actually below hers because our bedrooms were in the basement and I could hear her tapes at night. And so I'm now that crazy person, you know, my son's like every time he gets in my car and has to listen to it, he's like, oh my gosh, here we go again. But, you know, you, you do things in, in your job and your career that help you. And I think trying to stay positive right now is very important. You know, we have a girl that comes in and she's like an energy clearer. So like if we get in a you go get stuck in our business. We have someone that, you know, we've used to do that kind of stuff. So, you know, we try to think outside the box and try to stay current. And, you know, right now with what the market is doing, you know, you got to work, you know, those agents that are working are writing business. So, you know, there's ways around it, you know, go back to, go back to basics, you know, the ninja class, if you took that class or you haven't taken that class, Go back to some of those basic things that were talked about in Ninja, because I think, you know, we got a long time here for the rest of the year. We still have, what, six months left, you know, to the year finishes. The, the year's not over, you know, so if you didn't like how it started, you, you're in control of how you finish it. So that's kind of my advice on that. That is awesome advice, Kate. And, and if you haven't taken Ninja Selling and, and, uh, we're, we're having a class in September. Hopefully we'll, that will be able to occur. Um, you could read the book uh, Ninja Selling by Larry Kendall and, and kind of get a head start on that. Um, who has questions for Kate? If you have questions, just go ahead and unmute yourself. And uh, once you're done asking your question, please mute yourself again. Hey, Tade. Yes. It's Suzanne. I have a question. When you, you guys handle a lot of uh, clients where you've done multiple properties with them. Yes. What do you do in those instances, especially when you have possibly multiple uh, properties at once and they want you to keep cutting their commission because you're, they're giving you all this business. So what we have done in the past, um, we might give back a little bit of money uh, and it's not a lot. I'm talking a very small amount. Instead of giving them like a closing gift or something like that, we might say to them, you know, if we have your listing and you're going to buy something, especially if it's over a million dollars, you know, we might say to them, you know, if it's a full commission, you know, on what they're doing, we might say, you know, we'll give you anywhere from a thousand to twenty five hundred dollars back um, on what you're buying. Um, that's only if we've 
had like really at least four transactions with them in a short period of time. Um, you know, on the buying end, when they ask for our money, you know, we explain to them that you're not giving us our money, the seller is um, from that standpoint. So, you know, we try to make them understand just like when they're selling their properties, you know, they're paying the commission, you know, that commission has been negotiated with that agent and that agent's broker, you know, it has really nothing to do with them on that end. I mean, we've had a couple instances where the commission was cut on things that, you know, people have bought, you know, and we've said to them, you know, this is a reduced commission. I mean, we've had a couple times where they've said, we'll pay the difference. You know, you work that hard, you're entitled to that money. You know, the other thing my mom and I have seriously talked about um, doing on our listings is because I have found in Naples and it, I've never felt this way in Pittsburgh because it didn't happen as much, um, where people here are very fickle, where you spend tens of thousands of dollars marketing their property and then they just say, oh, we're not going to sell anymore. So we've actually thought about putting a clause in our listing contract that if they cancel their listing, you know, before the term is up, because of they've changed their mind, whatever, that they're gonna reimburse us for our marketing expenses to include and not limited to, you know, any print, media, videos, pictures, you know, stuff like that. We did have a seller that did pay us um, in Quail West that canceled, you know, and he, you know, said, I, you worked hard, you know, and I changed my mind and that's not fair to you. So um, we have discussed that as an option on our, our listings. Does that help you? Uh, can you hear me, Tate? Yes. Okay. The other thing that we always tell people is that, this is her mother, I'm not on video. <laughs> uh, the other thing we always tell people is that we will get you more through our negotiating skills. We're the best negotiators. And if an agent is willing to give up their own commission, Think of what they'll do with your money. And we use that all the time. So we show our value too in terms of we don't have to do it because we'll negotiate the best terms for them on their purchase and on their sale. And I think that they have to see the value to that. Good point, Emily. <laughs> well, you're the one who taught me that actually. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone else have any questions? Great. I ask you every day, Ted. <laughs> yes, I talk to Jill frequently. <laughs> frequently. But that's okay. Jill's working really hard. So she's Jill is doing good. phenomenally. We'll oh, tell everybody. <laughs> so, we'll hey, tell everybody Jill's doing a terrific job. Thank hey, you. Hey, what, you know, the marketing keeps changing and now with the COVID thing, you know, we're, we're kind of in a different situation again, but what have you found to be the, the best marketing methods for obtaining listings? Well, it, right now, Phil, we're not getting as many calls as we usually get uh, for listings, which is making us a little bit nervous that there might be a shortage of listings for yep. the upcoming months in the fall. Um, we historically have more people calling us. Um, and, you know, my mom and I have been talking about this extensively the last couple of weeks. Um, so some of the things that we're doing, you know, we're really staying in touch with past clients. We're trying to tell them if they hear of anyone or, you know, know of anyone thinking of selling to please have them call us. Um, you know, we're asking for business because I think when, you know, listings are fewer and far between, I think it's important to, you know, remind people. A lot of people think you're like so successful, you don't want to work with them or, you know, you don't have time for them. And I think as agents, you have to remind them that you want their business, that you need their business in order to stay successful and productive. So, Again, it goes back to the basics of, you know, you got to ask people for help sometimes, but from a marketing standpoint, uh, we've always done extensive photography. I mean, we spend more money, I guarantee, than any agent out there on our photography. We do night, we do aerials, we do videos. Um, we've always done that. We feel that, you know, the picture and the video is super, super important. Um, you know, one of the things, you know, that 
I think is important to have, you know, and summer months are good times for the company to do it. You know, I've said this before, Phil, you know, through marketing, we need to have better stock photography in-house at John R. Wood so that the branding message is the same for all these communities. You know, you have eight, five, six, seven, eight agents working one community and they all have different pictures and they're not current. So some of the communities have supplied us with the most current photography, but I think as a company, it would be helpful to have um, better stock photography available to agents to use so that, you know, we can get to the 35 pictures in the multi list and some of its branding about Naples, the pier, you know, if you have an old Naples listing, for instance, you know, have some current pictures of what Fifth Avenue looks like, what, you know, the pier looks like, things like that, so that, you know, the branding message is the same that we're presenting at, at John R. Wood. And Scott, you've done a really good job, you know, over time doing all those videos and everything you've done for the different areas. You know, I, I think, you know, whether it's Instagram as a company or, or yourself as an agent, you know, you got to put out the messages, more messages out there on social media, because um, that's, you know, people have a lot of time to be looking on social media right now. It doesn't cost you one cent. So, so Tate, what are you doing, though, to market to the sellers right now? Are you doing postal mailings, email campaigns, print ads? What are you doing? It's pretty much a combination. Um, we, we still, the postcards, believe it or not, the just listed and just sold postcards, we still get a huge return on those. I mean, every time we do one of those, someone historically has called us in a neighborhood, you know, saying, you know, that they saw this. Um, so we will probably always do that because we've always gotten a good return on our investment on that. Um, the other thing is email, you know, we have email lists, you know, that we have acquired over the years that, you know, we're doing on that. And um, sometimes we send a direct letter, you know, a handwritten note. Um, you know, if we've had a sale on a street, then we'll write a handwritten note saying, you know, we sold this, your neighbor's house in a very short period of time. There's still extra buyers. Have you given it any thought about selling? And we get a good response on that as well. But print, as far as, uh, you know, the magazines and stuff like that, I mean, we do that just to keep sellers happy. You know, they want to see their houses. We don't get listing calls. You know, sometimes uh, a seller, when we're on an appointment, will say, oh, we've seen, we know you guys. We see your ads in the magazines. So it's hard to qualify if they actually called us because of the magazine. I just think it helps cement to them that we are a top agent and we will market their home for them. Builds the brand. Yes. Thank you. Uh-huh. Bonnie, you're on mute if you're trying to talk. Hey, I have a question. Besides you and your mom, how many team members do you have, other team members? Uh, right now we have um, team members. We count team members as agents that are actually working underneath of us. So uh, we have Jill Hall and Ray Corette, who are team members, and Teresa McLaughlin, who's another team member. And then Mary, Mary Lena is a... Um, our main uh, secretary office manager, and then uh, Louise Backus is her helper in the office. Thank you. But my mom and I primarily do, I'd say 90% of the showings on all of our listings. Um, if it's a last minute and we're already booked, then you know Ray might help us on a showing. Jill usually does all of her own showings on any listing that she may have. Um, and if she can't do it, my mom and I will back her up. Hey, Tate, it's Megan. Hey, Megan. I just wanted to say to everybody out there that for someone who worked with you guys for many years that um, you are, your input today is invaluable. I think that I'm the agent today because of the tutelage that you and your mom gave me. So I would say to everybody to definitely listen to the message that you just sent because it's really important and you guys are great. So I just want to say thanks. Oh, you you were great to work with. <laughs> well, Thank you. Guys you. Are always the best. 
I can am. I try again? <laughs> but, um, can I have you to hear me? And congrats. Can you hear me Joe. now? Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Megan. I just wanted to say, uh, and congrats to Joe. That's awesome. You guys are great. I have to uh -huh. sign off because I have to um, go show property, but I just wanted to say thank you, and you guys are the best. Thanks, Megan. Thanks, Megan. You're welcome. See ya. Can you hear me now? Yes. Oh, thank goodness. Sorry. Uh, anyway, Tate, I loved your suggestion about the stock photos. I think it's really important, and I hope that that'll be a possibility. It also reminded me that I would like to see us have um, a more special presentation folder. In the past, we had solid navy or solid green with a gold logo in the center, and I just felt that they reflected the type of company that John R. Wood is. And I know right now the image of the globe is like a subliminal message to the people that we're meeting with. I just know personally, I, I really liked the ones that we used to use before because I felt that they were more in keeping with the um, quality of the company. That's all I'd like to say. One of my questions to you is, do you use the listing presentation boxes? Because they're fabulous. No. Yeah, you should definitely, Bonnie, there's a box that um, we actually helped with marketing because the company we came from had something like that. And we, we asked them to do something similar and they've done it. And it's a beautiful presentation well, box. Uh, your manager has copies of them um you know here in the offices and um hold on i think mary lena is getting me one she she heard me hold on one second i'll show you what it looks like great thank you very much so this is the presentation box okay and it it opens like this and there's a there's a tray to keep you know your marketing materials here and yeah. then on this side, there's a sleeve and you can stick your contract stuff in that side. And then um, like we put a couple pens in there and some other, you know, marketing stuff. And it kind of has this tab, you know, here on the side that just magnetically closes. We use this on every listing presentation and Phil laughs because I asked for it back when we get the, the, <laughs> the listing uh, because they're expensive. And so my mom and I being past management, we know how expensive these things are. So sellers always give them back to us um, and we reuse them. So, you know, we take this on every single listing presentation we go on um, and we have found it to be very, very useful. And they, 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 stock, they're available for listing 750000 or greater. Yes. Hey, do you take the okay. pen back after the listing is sold? <laughs> no, because I th those are marketing materials that we have for my mom and I that we uh, <laughs> leave behind. <laughs> I also get a jar opener, too. <laughs> Does anyone else have any questions? If you want me to send you some of those, Bonnie, send me an email and, and we'll get you some stuff. Uh, to Great. Be yes, thank you. I would love it. Anyone else have any questions? I don't think so. That was excellent, Tade. That was so great. Oh, Every you. point you made, I thought, was so important. And just obviously it works. It works. And you do it to perfection. Well, thank you. I appreciate it. So my mom and I have worked hard to... My mom first built her reputation, so I had big shoes to fill when I moved here. So I, you know, we've worked well together uh, trying to, you know, perfect and, you know, we have to make changes all the time. I mean, you have to be willing to change with what the market's doing. Very stylish shoes those are too, if I might add. So if there are no other questions, oh, David, you have Greg's face floating behind you. That's kind of funny. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. If there are no other questions, could we just give Tate a resounding thank you on yourself and bravo. Thank you for sharing your expertise and you're busy and we so appreciate it.
do, and we so appreciate everyone taking time uh, to join and ask questions. Uh, yeah. Take care, everyone. Thanks for organizing. My pleasure. Thanks, everyone, for making the effort to come. Okay. Thank you.